Hi, I'm Varian Brandon, and this is another of the Tangent episodes. I couldn't tell you what letter because they're done in letters. I have no idea. I should have looked that up. I, I, and I always say that. I know. I know. But I never look it up. <laughs> anyway, um, this is where I sort of chat about what's on my needles and kind of what I'm working on, just in case you might be interested. So in this case, currently, I have been working on... Um, a couple of different things for other people which have deadlines and in between working on those deadlines um, I have been working on a couple of projects of my own uh, several of which are on the computer which which means I'm, I'm writing up patterns and uh, at least one and that's soon to be over with so I've got to figure out what to put on my needles but at least one still on needles but I'm getting close to finishing that one so I have to figure out what's coming next I don't even know. I've got an idea, but anyway, that's neither beside the point. Let's just start with the ones that I've been doing for other people. The first of which, it happened um, first of the year. And um, I am, I sit there, I realize, I think by looking up. So forgive me, I'm trying to continue, maintain eye contact, but I'm kind of like going, okay, now what am I talking about? It has nothing to do with anything else except for I'm just thinking which is rare. I know it's rare. <laughs> so as my husband would say that probably. My dad always used to say that. Will you just think? Um, anyway, sorry. It's a whole other subject. My dad was a, do a doll. No, don't even take any disparaging things about my dad. Anyway, um, so what happened the first of the year was that I got an email from the editor of Ply Magazine. Um, Ply Magazine is a spinning, spinner's magazine, who asked me to do a pattern for them for their fall uh, to 21 uh, episode. So it's uh, episode. Hello. You work in television much? Okay. F issue. Um, so what, and she was very nice and very flattering. I was totally flattered and um, so she's good. She, <laughs> there was no way I could say no. <laughs> anyway, she said, um, so I said, fine. So the way this, ep this episode, I keep doing that. This issue works and I'm, I think all the other issues work the same way is that they will, uh, the, the, um, designers specify what color, um, what colors they want, what yarn they want. And oh, I forgot to say, she told me, this is JC Boggs now, she told me you could have any yarn, any color. And I was like, seriously? Um, I mean, that's, that sounds like, wow, that's fantastic. But when you really kind of think about it, it's kind of overwhelming. In, I mean, I don't know. I don't spin, so I don't know much about yarn except for Shetland yarn, and that's and that's about all I kind of know. I mean, I know merino, but I mean, it's just like I don't spin, so I don't. Um, but any color, really? And I think I overthought it a bit, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> anyway, um, and then that write up goes out to um, spinners, and then the spinners get put the yarn together and get it to the designer. And then the designer does the project and hands it into the magazine, you know, writes up the pattern. That's how it works out. So I can't talk about my pattern. I mean, I can't show you, I can talk about it, but I can't show you my pattern um, because of working for a magazine, as you know. Um, but I can tell you it's called Puri and Vine or Puri, Puri, Puri and Puri and Vine, yeah. And it's a hat that it's called the issue is called the hat in hand. So everything in the issue is hats or mittens or mitts or that sort of thing. So um, you'll keep an eye out for that in the magazine. Um, and then um, the other thing I worked on that also came in at around the first of the year was a call from Mountain Meadow Wool. And I've done some work with, with them before, as you know. And they had a fall uh, yarn um, club submission that they wanted. They wanted me to do a pattern of, we decided a hat and mittens. And so that yarn came in and that I can show you. So let me show you what happened with that one. This one, um, I had an issue with, and it's all me, you know, I think this pandemic has got my, got my confidence kind of, I just, it just, it, hmm. um, and I did an issue, uh, I did an episode hello, of um, the des Design Decisions uh, series on this channel for this particular project, which I'm going to release 
soon, probably right after this one goes out, um, on the kind of the design decisions behind that one. Um, and it, it all turned out fine, but it was one of those that I was like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I do this? So anyway, um, let me show you. This is the hat. I'm gonna just put that in right here. I'm gonna do like this. So, so editing me will know. That's the hat. And it's a slouch hat. It's called Encostico. And then, so it's called Encostico. Um, hopefully I'm back from the, from the, the, the um, B-roll here. But um, it's called Encostico because the patterning on it was reminiscent of some of the um, older Greek encaustic um, tiles that were also became, the style kind of became popular in the, in the Victorian age. But during the Victorian time era, um, they were not done in the technique of encaustic technique. It was done a different way, but they called them encaustic tiles anyway. That's, I learned a lot, can you tell? <laughs> anyway, um, I've called this as an homage to all of that. This is called encaustico. Let me show you the mittens while I'm at it. These are very classic mittens. So let me show you those. Um, what I did with those is they are a shaped peasant thumb is what I'm kind of calling it. From what I understand, a peasant thumb is you have a you have a, the straight mitten and you just have a little like thumb trick that you all of a sudden have this thumb kind of sticking out of the things. But these are kind of a la Elizabeth Zimmerman where they're shaped, that's it's shaped all in here. So you, you decrease to kind of nothing and then you add it back and nothing in this area. And then you add it back in so that it's really sort of shaped in this, in this way. Um, so those are the two in Costico hat and mittens. And that's for um, Mountain Meadow uh, yarn. I am understanding that um, those will be released um, to their October yarn group. So if you're not, if you're interested, and I mean you should because they've got some really cute things that they're, and interesting projects that, that their yarn group does. Um, I think you can go up to Mountain Meadow Wool website.com, I think is what it is, and um, sign up for the October or find, sign up for the Yarn Club if you want to sign up the whole thing. After October, presumably in November, I don't know how long they do it, they'll have that up as a kit. And then in December, I will release the pattern, just the pattern itself on Ravelry and on, um, and on my website. And incidentally, the Ply Magazine um, pattern, I think it's a year. So ne not this fall, but next fall, that pattern will be released um, on Ravelry and on, um, in, on my website. So I have a website store. Did I tell you I have a website store? Yeah, I do. It took a lot of figuring around, but I think I find it. I haven't got everything transferred. I mean, copied over there, copied to that. I mean, I'm gonna keep the Ravelry store too, but it's the whole thing. Anyway, um, so that's those are those two projects. The other things I've been doing while I haven't kind of in between working on those are working has been has been working on uh, projects or writing patterns up. I've got a couple of things that need to be written up. So one of which is this one, which you have seen forever and I'm sure you're probably sick of it, but I'm finally getting the thing written up. And um, it, has, it still doesn't have an official name, but I'm thinking it's going to be, because several people have mentioned things because the grapes are so prominent in it, but there are also things like olives here. Um, and that possibly could be braided bread. So I have decided that this will be called either Alessandro's Feast, or Sandro's Feast, or Botticelli's Feast. Um, the first and the last one sound kind of cool to me. Um, Botticelli's um, name, official, let's see, his real name was Alessandro, two or three other middle names in the middle, um, Filippi, Filippi, F-I-L-I-P-E-P-I. I don't speak enough Italian to be able to do that, but anyway. Um, and then he was known as Sandro Botticelli. So uh, Botticelli sounds so cool. So it probably will end up being Botticelli's Feast or something of that sort, because it really is, a, it's not just the grapes. It is, other, I mean, a whole feast, if you will. But the trick with this is that 
I use, I'm not hitting the microphone, am I? I'm always used to hitting the microphone. Um, I use um, a charting software. Here we are, tech talk now. I use a charting software. And that charting software um, creates a chart, obviously. And then I drop that chart into my publishing software where I write my patterns, my, um, my patterns. And because of the way I do charts, and if you are unfamiliar with that, you can see the charts episode, reading charts episode of my Stranded Color Work discussion um, series, which is all about Stranded Color Work. Um, reading charts. Uh, what I like to do is have the chart, and the chart is only in two colors. In this case, it got, if there's more than two, there's like four different things, but not never four colors per round sometimes. It's, it's a little, it's, this one is an interesting pattern. Um, but in other, it, it, just to make a long story short, which I think I'm way past now, um, is that you have the chart, and then on the right-hand side of the, um, of the uh, chart, I'm sitting here figuring out is it's going to be flipped or what do I, anyway, forget that. It Just suffice it to say, on the right-hand side of the chart, there are two, and in this case, I've had to do three or four columns um, that correspond to each round. And in those columns are what colors each one of the different squares, the different types of squares um, on the round. So long story, I mean, to, to simplify a bit, if there are only two colors, there is a, uh, a white square and a gray square. And there are two columns. And in one column, you'll see the, the, um, indi the it's usually a letter, that indicates what color the color, the grade square is going to be. And then next to that is a column that tells you what color you use for the white square. OK, does that make sense? That's just two colors. Fortunately, with these, um, you have things like you have the background and the foreground of these vines, and then occasionally you have these, um, what are these things called? Grapes in there. So I had to figure out a way to be able to tell you what, to, when you got to that, what you saw. And then there are all these little knots, little um, blueberry type knot things in there. So I had to figure out a way to tell you that. So uh, hopefully it's pretty obvious. And then, um, but, the way I was making all that work all of a sudden stopped working the way I, way I need for it to be because these are big charts. And I about, I was like, okay, I give up. I should stop using this. I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go try to figure out Illustrator. Illustrator was, I, I mean, if there's a learning curve because I don't know it. So there's a learning curve for that. So I had to figure, and I didn't have time to learn it. So, I dropped back and figured out a way, but it took me a while to get all the charts right. And what I've done with this, with these patterns, incidentally, if you ever decide, if you decide to want to do it, is that what I've decided is that they are different sets of charts for um, different sizes, and the sizes fall into four categories, um, four groupings, if you will. So, and it's not like A, B, and C. Uh, sizes A, B, and C fall into category one, and you know D, E, and F fall in category two. It's like C and G fall into one category, and D and and um, H or something of that sort. And it's because of the number of the repeats, because the, the stitch repeat is sixty uh, stitches. I, this is making any sense? <laughs> anyway, what I could do is put is put one sixty stitch repeat. And then put all sorts of lines going. If you for this size start here, for this size start there, and then you have to flip it. I've tried to do these star, these charts, the chart sections, so that when you're working on it, there is as minimal flipping back and forth as possible. So what you do is you either print out or you zero in on the pages that have the charts for your size grouping only. And the only thing on those charts are things for your size grouping. And that's it. So um, that means that um, it hopefully will be easier. That's my goal, is to make it easy for anybody, you know, trying to do this sort of thing. So, okay, there's that one. Now, the other thing I've got that I haven't started on the, um, on writing up yet is um, this coat here. 
Um, I start, well, I had to take that back. I have started it, but I haven't really started it. So that com that gets on the computer to try to write this code up. This code is currently called branch and vine, but because I, I think it sounds too similar to Peary and Vine, which is the Fly Magazine hat, and they're not anywhere close to being similar. They just have viney things. Both of them have viney things in it. This one's gonna get a new name. Um, I'm not sure what yet, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Um, but that's, that's the next one to be written up after I wade through this one. I have, of the four size groupings, the first one was the hardest um, because it was new and kind of set up. The second one has gotten easier. The third, third and fourth may be a little harder because there's, anyway, just, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just slugging through is what I'm doing. While um, that's been going on, I have been um, working on another, can you see this? This, this is familiar, it's over here. This, let me just pull over the mannequin. Um, this is the familiar shawl. If you, yeah, you can kind of see that. Um, this is familiar shawl. Um, I'm doing another kind of, it's another rectangular shawl with tassels on the end and everything like that, but it's got less colors in it. And, and you probably have seen this before. This one was originally called Red on Red because for obvious reasons, as I said, can you just look at that and say, that should be called Red on Red? No, I was had, had some yarn left over from this project and I wanted to do something that was kind of these kind of patterning um, but two shades of red, and I never could get them to be exactly the way I wanted it. And then all of a sudden I decided, well, I really like the blue and the brown. So um, I don't know what this one's gonna be called um, at all. Um, it obviously can't be called red on red, um, but um, anyway, that's what this is. And this is a long one. This end of it looks, um, is pretty much done. I got to cut it open the last part of it, but that's where the, that's what's going to be on, on each end. And the tassels will probably be about this color as well. Um, and I've got the other end to do, but you see where I am on the other end. I'm, st I'm here, so I haven't got that much more to go. And then I've got um, to him, all of the facings, all of the, um, you see the, the salmon, this is called dusty red, I think. All of these have to be turned under and him down. And then I've got to wet block it and it'll be done. So, um, I've got yarn all over the place. Anyway, um, so that's kind of where I am with those. What's on the needles after that? I don't know. I have a pattern that didn't go, um, I've got a pattern I've written up that's never released, and I'm thinking I might redo it in some of, some of Jean's yarn, um, Jameson and Smith yarn. Oh, not Jameson. Hello, sorry, Jean. Elemental Effects yarn. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't say that. Um, and don't get me wrong. I love Jameson Smith. That's not it, but they're just not the two different companies. Um, anyway, and then um, I've got that. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure yet what's going to be on there. In the meantime, I'm teaching at uh, Southeastern Animal Fiber Festival in Asheville in uh, next month. If they let us teach, we'll see. Um, if, you're, if you're taking that class from me, um, be aware that we're going to be really safe. We're going to sit far apart. I'm going to do as much as I can um, with a projector, computer and the projector, um, and masks and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've had my shots. Um, I plan to isolate a little bit before, um, before that, so that's where we are. Um, I'm also teaching at um, the Canuga Knitting and Quilting Retreat in January. That's the one I coordinate. That's Martin Luther King weekend, which is like the 13th through the 16th or the something of that. I haven't got it in front of me, something like that. Um, that is, um, we have four knitting instructors and a, a quilting instructor. And uh, we go up the mountains and sit around and do our thing. Um, hopefully by January, things will have calmed down a bit, I hope. And then, um, in March, I'm teaching at a whole bunch of classes at the um, Carolina Fiber Festival in March. So, and that's over in Raleigh um, at the fairgrounds, I think. Fairgrounds is where it usually is. So anyway, um, but that's about it for me. If you've got any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask, especially if you've got questions about any sort of stranded uh, knitting project you're working on. 
I will be more than happy to help. And um, other than that, that's about it for me. So I hope you guys have a great time. Stay safe. Um, keep knitting. All that kind of good stuff. <laughs> and you can find me um, at Brandon Knitting Designs. Is where you can find you can find all my stuff at Brandon Knitting Designs, which is my website. It has links to everything else. So thanks, guys. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>